Well, hey guys, welcome to Star Wars on High. Thank you for stopping by. We are back with another episode of the High Republic show. Going to watch it with you guys, give you guys my reaction to the newest announcements. Very excited to check this out. Let's uh, see what they got in store. We are like, what, two months away now from the next wave of books coming out in January. So I'm wondering if we're going to get some more previews. You know, I have no idea what to expect, but we are, we're getting closer. So without further ado, let's hop into the show. I'll give you guys my thoughts. All right, 24-minute episode on the horizon here. Really don't know what to expect. I'm guessing we're going to talk about some of the upcoming titles of January, but probably not too detailed because, I mean, that's right around the corner. Whatever the case might be, I'm always excited to hear more news. I like that they do these bi-monthly, give us updates, give us something to be excited for. So really do enjoy these. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today on the Higher Public Show, we're going behind the scenes of the new Higher Public themed tale in ILM X Labs Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Last Call. Meet the brand new characters from Marvel's latest Higher Public miniseries, Trail of Shadows, exclusive reveals, and much, much more. All right, so get ready it's exciting. To stare at the screen in stunned silence like a calcified load and great storm. Because the Higher Public Show. Too right soon. Now. Too soon. So be wary, guys, as the intro rolls in here, which I really do love the graphics they use. Could be spoilers, so just be cognizant of that. Be wary of that if you're not caught up. If you only read like one book, Light of the Jedi, you might want to wait uh, and come back to these Hello, later. Hello, my lovely internet pals. It's me, Christine Ariel, back at it again to deliver your bi-monthly dose of higher public fitness. And boy, has a lot transpired since the last time we talked. Like, can we discuss for a minute how the Phil Noto designed a teaser oh. poster for the end? We talked about this in the channel. I, I'm, I'm pausing already. I absolutely love this poster. This is so good. So, so good. So... Anyway, sorry. Phase one, who will survive? Really? Y'all are really just going to break my heart like that right after I just fell in love with these characters? And yeah. how dare you, Lucasfilm Publishing? Showing off the destruction of the Starlight Beacon? We just built the model, and now you're <laughs> setting it on fire. The next phase is going to be heartbreaking. But before we can talk about the future, let's talk about the past. As in, what comics were released since the last time we talked? Okay. It's time for the timeline. Following the disastrous events of the Republic Fair, Stellan Geos has initiated an investigation into the death of Loden Greatstorm. He tasked Jedi investigator Emmerich Kaftor to get to the bottom of the mystery. Simultaneously, Chancellor Lena So has also hired an investigator to crack the case. Cian Holt, a high-end private eye who plays by her own rules. I really like Trail of Shadows. I'm just going to pause right here and tell you guys. The first issue is, I thought, really successful in setting the tone, setting the, the goal ahead. So I'm very excited to keep going on the series. So sorry, let's keep Deep going. in the shadows. Meanwhile, Avar Chris is going against the will of the Jedi Council, launching a mission to discover who has replaced Lorna D as the Eye of the Nile. After yep. infiltrating the Nile foundry on Zeiss, Keeve and Tarek are forced to do the unthinkable. Kill their ally, Moraga the Hutt, to prove to Tempest Runner Zetar and the rest of the Nile that they are, in fact, who they say they are, and not just Jedi in disguise. But thanks to a clumsy Lepi, an explosive diversion is triggered, allowing Keeve to buy some time. Meanwhile, in space, Avar and Skier are asking Sarah what they're sensing with their connection to their bond twin, Tarek, on Zeiss, while Skier learns he's losing his connection to the Force. Uh-oh. Yeah. Meanwhile, on Takadana, the Padawans from the Starhopper are on another adventure, defending the local Jedi Temple against the Nile. But it wouldn't be a trip to Takadana without a cameo from Maz Kanata. Woo. Here, the Jedi learn that Kor has known Maz for a long, long time. Since he was a baby. Aww. We also learned the skull he wears on his head is actually from a Vondon crab that Baby Court found inside Maz's castle. He's like a Q-bone, you know? Wears like the skull of his dead mother, although in this case it's a, it's a crab monster, but anyway. Union, while cute, isn't what it's cracked up to be. In fact, it turns out that once the Nile attacked the Jedi Temple, one of the Nile defectors the Jedi met earlier wasn't really a defector at all. Nope, she was just waiting for the perfect moment to blow up the temple. Back on Zeiss, Moraga the Hutt is recuperating following the explosion. But Zetar is determined to have the undercover Jedi kill their ally. Frustrated, Zeke does it himself, electrocuting the Hutt, forcing her to reveal that Keeve and Tarek are not Nile, but Jedi that have infiltrated their ranks. Then, because it's Star Wars, a good old lightsaber battle ensues. Nile limbs getting chopped off, Jedi getting sucker punched, Hutt getting electrocuted. But uh-oh, <laughs> the dead speak. Lorna D is back, baby. Yep. She brought a mysterious weapon in a box with her. A weapon so terrifying the Jedi have been forever altered by its very presence. That weapon? The Leveler! Unleash the Leveler, paralyzes the Jedi, and breaks Sarit's connection with Tarek, calcifying their body! Dun, dun, dun! But it's even worse for Sarit's bond twin, Tarek. He struggles with paralyzing fear of this weapon as she's hallucinating yep. Tarek getting torn inside out. Sensing an opening, Zetar attempts to strike down Keith, but is stopped by Lorna D using the Jedi's fallen saber against him. 
Meanwhile, on Takadana, the Jedi are reeling after the explosion, or especially picking up the broken skull mask he's worn all his life. Ready to show what he's made of, Court takes off after the Nile and their ships. The Jedi are victorious thanks to an unmasked Court and Maz's old Jedi friend, Sav Malagon. But elsewhere, Crick hints that they have something very special. But we like the mask, the, the cube. Back on the Jedi it. ship at Araxia, Avar and the Jedi are in a panic as Sarah continues to feel the effects of what their bond twin is experiencing. Yep. They set a course for Zeiss. But not before Serret falls into the same void of nothingness their twin is experiencing. Suddenly, the Nile attack the ship as Skier and Avar pilot vectors to the foundry below. Skier jumps from the ship and takes the Nile head on, slicing Zetar's mech suit in half, yep. incapacitating him inside the suit. The Jedi rush to Tarek's side just in time to watch Lorna D attempt to escape again. But Avar Chris has other plans. Will she be able to stop Lorna D? What will become of the twins? And why is Maz always around when giant structures are getting destroyed on Takodana? With every answer, we just end up with more That's a good questions. point. Thanks, Star Wars. I'll take a pause there for a second, and, and they just recapped a lot of the content that's come out uh, in the comics over the last month. I haven't made a bunch of videos in the comics, just been really too busy. Um, so good little recap there. Uh, re refresh my memory as well going into the next couple issues. But really, really good stuff. Um, I've enjoyed them, the, the, the last couple issues especially. So onward. Wars. You remember Addie? Yeah, she went on to become a Jedi Knight. And she knew that meant eventually taking a Padawan, but what she didn't know is that in order to teach, you gotta be willing to learn. So I have not played this game. My I, name I know it's is for Jose VR. Perez III, and I'm the director of Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge Last Call. What's really exciting is to continue our exploration of the High Republic. We were so excited to be one of the first groups to really take that into an interactive medium with Addy Sun Z and Temple of Darkness, and we're super stoked to see. Notice it said the first group, which leads me to believe there are other groups working on High Republic projects, like has been rumored. Addy's transition to a Jedi Knight with her own Padawan in the High Republic many, many years later. Not all challenges are opponents, Padawan. You'll see. For the Sacred Garden, what we wanted to do is really explore a different side of the Jedi. And what's so cool about this specific tale is that <laughs> instead of diving deep cute. into just all the combat and stuff, we really wanted to take a look at what it means to have a master and a Padawan relationship and to teach kind of more of the spiritual side of the Force. Okay. This is where you'll take some of your first steps of really listening to the Force. Hi, my name is Raymond Chow, and I am an experienced designer at ILM X Lab. Trying to nail the feeling of the Force is definitely a hard task to do. Fortunately, we already had a lot to leverage from Vader Immortal and the first tale of Addy, so we were already off to a great start. But the okay. challenge here was to tune the Force just enough so that it would feel good for those gameplay mechanics in the pavilion, right. while also feeling similar to what players are used to from before. An obstacle also presents us with a challenge and challenges push us. In trying to design the spiritual side of the force, Interesting. we really had a couple mechanics that we had in mind. We had three different training pavilions in the Sacred Garden. So the first one was patience, and in there you are slicing okay. remotes in certain patterns, also while trying to avoid the bomb remotes. In balance, you are using the force to guide these rocks and stack them in certain patterns, making sure they don't fall before your force stamina depletes. And in okay. the growth pavilion, you are I don't presented with these kind DVR, of so I will probably not get a chance plants, to play these. And but... you're guiding these seeds that kind of spin and fall from the ceiling into the mouth. Star Wars makes so much sense for VR. This beautiful the better it gets, I the hope more the player sure learns we'll something from each pavilion, and also the finale of the Sacred Garden. Thank you for reminding me that the flow of knowledge goes both ways. When you really think about what it means to be this guardian of peace, when you're younger, you think the best way to solve problems is to jump in head first and just chop it down. Heck and really, yeah. patience, balance, growth, these are all lessons that we've wrapped up in this. And then there's kind of a final lesson that Addy has in the whole thing, because you know, I think the main through line that we really were running with this is that even the master can learn from the apprentice. And that's something that we really wanted to drive home in this tale. Nice. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. 
All right, who's in the round table? next guest, virtually none of the stories you've read from the higher public would make it into your home. It takes a village to make a book, y'all. And it takes some really good editors to help make the stories you love pop. I'll just move my Please welcome right senior editor from Marvel, Mark Paniccia. Hey, from Mark. From Biz, executive editor, Fawn Lau. Fawn. And from Penguin Random House, creative director, Elizabeth Schaefer. Welcome, y'all. Elizabeth, hello. Engaging in a project like the higher public, it's a pretty large undertaking, let alone to do it across three different publishers. What's the communication yeah. been like on an endeavor like this? The answer is that it's it's really easy when you have a great team and that level of communication, right? So we have the amazing team at Lucasfilm, we have the story group, and we have the luminous authors themselves who just live and breathe this stuff. So you always feel safe that um, there's gonna be a team behind you. It's been a great experience because everyone is so invested in this project. All the writers, they're in constant communication with each other. Yeah. They're always there for us when we need them. Bon, what's it been like for you trying to maintain that continuity? Yeah. Well, Viz actually is a new partner with Lucasfilm, so that was also exciting to become part of the world that Penguin and okay. Marvel is so used to. So starting that relationship, one, was one of the first things that we had to do and understanding kind of the process between yeah. storytelling approvals and who the creatives are involved. On top of that, working with Japanese artists and kind of getting them knowing feelings that the Edge Japanese balance, creatives yep. had on Star Wars as a whole. It's, it's great cool. that you acknowledge it because so much of Star Wars is inspired by Japanese culture. Yep. So it is great to see is. books like the manga, to see series like Visions and actually have people of the culture a part of the concept that they inspired. It seems that things have been pretty cohesive for you. So I'd have to ask, what's been the biggest challenge that you've faced on the higher public? I would say this, the scheduling. Scheduling's uh, a, a big factor in it because we have to make sure that we're not revealing something that's in one of the other books. Yeah. We want to make sure that we're not contradicting I can see that. anything that's happening, that everything syncs up. And that's a huge undertaking. And again, if it wasn't for a story group, there would probably be a lot of misses along the way. That's yep. kind of the easy part for us. It's just with the scheduling, as with anything in publishing. Sorry, Mark, I'm cutting you off. Is, uh, it, it can be challenging. That's totally true. That's the double-edged sword of that level of collaboration and communication is that sometimes the team is working on a comic that Kevin is, is still working on getting something yep. done. And until that gets figured out, you know, this thing can't be finalized in the novel. And so yeah. that's kind of the, that's the beauty and the challenge of the High Republic, making sure everything wants together. I think that we have an extra layer of communication with Japan. We worked with Justina for volume one and, our, and we're working with Daniel volume two to help us get the okay, I didn't realize that. storytelling in line and then trying to get Japanese creators that information as soon as possible is that challenge as well. It's fascinating. Scheduling because manga happens also at a different pace. So uh, we don't have the single issues every month. So making right. sure that we can have the story fit in was also pretty hard to navigate, I think. It the take on the drain gear was but cool. I think that's the part that's fun. Like a lot of things we have a routine for, but this one I think is the most new and interesting in publishing. I think knowing that there's things, there are things coming through, but not knowing exactly what's going to happen because we're all in the yeah. middle of our manuscripts. <laughs> so it's been helpful to have Daniel share some of his work and obviously everyone at Lucasfilm sharing resources. Has been How cool would that be? They show those those snapshots of the rooms where all the all the uh, team is together talking and working. That should be so much fun, you know, charting out Star Wars stories. How cool is that? Very cool. It's just been crazy. What I want for um, preserve for posterity is like the secret writer slack of them like <laughs> talking to each other and developing all this stuff. Like that needs to be archived for the future. Is there a documentary on this in the future? <laughs> Someone can publish the behind the scenes book. Between the three of you, you've worked on so many projects, written on so many projects. Elizabeth, what project that you've worked on holds a special place in your heart? You know, for, for the higher public itself, I mean, just the first Light of the Jedi. Charles had this monumental task to introduce you to this entire world, and, and he absolutely pulled it off. So yeah. just getting to see that Light of the Jedi is really good. under him. And then the Fallen Star, working with Claudia on this has been amazing. Very it was one of for, those rare projects stage, yeah. where it comes in and you really have to separate out. I'm reading this as a Star Wars fan who cares about these characters and I ring this as an editor who help, needs to help make this a great book. Whoa, 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 whoa. That sounds ominous. 
the it's not a spoiler to say there are casualties okay, well. in this wave of storytelling that were just rough to go through. Good. But I like that. that emotional impact is what it makes this series so special. I don't know. That was just a gift to work on. You just got to be, it made me very emotional thinking about grieving anyone <laughs> at this point because we're all so emotional. What? Attacked. No one's that in the fall in love with these characters immediately. You know, they all represent all kinds of emotions. And with Keeve, what I love about that character is the fact that she is truly gifted and she's always a little bit doubtful, but because she's so gifted and so skilled, she thinks she screwed up. And they're like, no, you passed the test. We all know or fantasize about having a moment like that or whatever. And then- But we just failed, no? Sphere, and that, you know, struggling with that internal challenge was really super compelling. Just this project alone has been an amazing experience. What's yeah. it like to be able to be a part of shaping a new portion of the Star Wars universe? Oh, it's terrifying and it's so special, right? I think uh, a lot of the projects that all of us do are often tied very specifically to the newest film or the newest TV show. And because of that, there are a lot of lines that you need to color in. Yeah. And with the High Republic there, there are no lines and that is thrilling yeah. and anything can happen. And because anything can happen, um, uh, again, just a little bit terrifying, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that cool. it's been really fun, I think for, um, at least for Japan to be involved in that sense. Yeah. Um, a lot of publishing before has you know, originated here. So I think the writer that we have um, Shima was really happy. I hope I could speak for her to, to be able to, you know, get to create something um, right. from her own imagination that would be part of um, Star Wars canon. Yes, and that also is creating a character that so many will see themselves in with strength and courage and the light of the Jedi. Got him! No. <laughs> Uh, I want to move to you, Mark, and ask you, say someone's apprehensive about getting started with the High Republic. What would be the thing that you said to get them invested and tell them why they should care about these stories? Because it's so good. I don't know. I, I would be like new villains, you know, new challenges, new designs. It's the golden age of the Jedi. But, you know, even in golden times, there's all kinds of things that can go wrong. I think you just got to give it a chance. I would ask somebody to give it a chance and, and say, I dare you not to like it. Yeah, I think a lot of people, as I've said, if you read Light of the Jedi, would have a hard time really not enjoying any of it. Um, or, or really, um, you know, that was my, my take on it. What, what I think was so intriguing to me about The Higher Republic is coming off The Mandalorian um, season two, and, you know, I was really excited about Star Wars. Um, it was the first kind of project that I could kind of be a part of um, from the beginning. What I mean by that is so much of, of legends or extended EU content, et cetera, whatever you want to call it, um, it's been written long ago or written by authors and stories here and stories there. It all felt always kind of um, hard to jump into, hard to to um, fully understand. And there's great YouTubers out there who've made top you know videos talking about that, what books to read, et cetera, Star Wars timeline, for example. But you know, for me, being on the High Republic, it's like seeing uh, historical moments in Star Wars, and I can jump right in. I can understand the whole narrative. I can grow with these characters. I can grow over the years with that with that world. That to me was so exciting. Um, that that's why I started the the High Republic and Light of the Jedi. I thought was really solid. Into the Dark, I thought was really great as well. Test of Courage. Those first three books are just really good, in my opinion. Really fun Star Wars books. Um, and so since then, I've been hooked. So anyway, on we go. I dare you not to love it. What's so brilliant about the series and how it's been constructed is that you can read as much or as little as you want. Well, there so you go. You want to read comics? Awesome. There are comics for you to read. Don't worry about the novels. It's okay. You won't feel like you're missing out. And, and the reverse you is are, true. You just want to read a novel? That's okay too. Like you don't need to feel like this is all or nothing. And sure. if I don't consume every piece of the High Republic, I'll be so lost and not understand what's going on. But I have them. That's not the case at all. Fantastic. Vaughn, bon, what's the thing about working on Edge of Balance that made you invest in Star Wars The Higher Republic? I think um, the format, I think being able to be part of this multi-publisher program and put manga in front of people who have been familiar with Star Wars and giving them a look into what manga is. It's 
so selfishly introducing, I guess, the, the format of manga. But, you know, like you said, there's a lot of Star Wars that is inspired by Japanese culture. Yep. So being able to officially kind of yep. be a part of that and be able to incorporate that into High Republic was really fun. And now is the part where I attempt to get spoilers that you will not give me, but I'm going to try anyway. Elizabeth, what are you most looking forward to in the coming phases of the High Republic? I'm really excited for people yes. to see Martian Bro's journey. Yep. I think you know stories only as good as its villain Absolutely. and Martian is a great villain to see him evolve from this confident competent place but there's unrest among the tempest that he knows yep. he's riding this tiger and at any moment he might lose control yeah. i think is that sliver of doubt within him makes him so interesting so i'm excited for people to see his journey He's a total smoke show, and we all know it. <laughs> yes, he is. I'm sorry. I was not going to say it, but it's true, and we all know it. <laughs> I'm totally there with you, Christina. Yeah, absolutely. Vaughn, what are you looking forward to in the coming phases? For our next volume, uh, I hope people look forward to maybe seeing some familiar faces. Lily has been on Banshee, kind of isolated, but in volume two, hopefully change that's the little teaser i guess for our upcoming volume every little bit helps so mark what are you looking forward to in this next phase i'm looking forward to people's reactions trail of shadows i think what's really cool about that is just the vibe yeah it's so noir, i agree and it's kind of it's different than what you would expect yep without spoiling anything i just check it out and you'll see exactly yeah. what i really mean. like trail of shadows and so then, far with Eye of the Storm. Probably my most like, anticipated. This is saying, you know, the villains make the story. They do. And this so is true a in Star story Wars. about a pretty unique villain that I think ranks up there with some of the great Star Wars villains because it's not going the way that they think it is. That's so true. I think the best part is like getting to see people's reactions online when you've been working in this vacuum for yeah. months and months and months and then yeah. you finally get to see the... The joy, the pain, the sorrow, and uh, that, that's really special. Yeah, I bet. Well, you all have given me so much to stress about without saying anything at all. But I'm so grateful that I can talk to each of you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly can't thank you enough for the work that you do behind the scenes to bring these stories to all of us. And I hope you will join us again soon. Let's do it. I'm in. Wait. <laughs> Jedi Master Loden Greatstorm has been turned to dust, and Bel Zedifar has been left in a state of catatonic shock. But how, and why? Turning to one of their own, the Jedi enlist Emirate Kaftor to investigate. Sian Holt, an in-demand private investigator, has also been hired to take on the case by Chancellor Lena So. As a Jedi, Emmerich's calm demeanor and clear-eyed outlook make him an ideal investigator. Mm. Emmerich's trust in his own instincts often result in a direct, even-footed, and calm confrontation in the face of danger. Sian, well, she has her own way of dealing with things. Seamlessly slipping between high society and the dark underworld in order to get answers by any means necessary. Together, this unlikely duo must solve one of the galaxy's biggest mysteries. Can these two opposites work like the together music. to crack the case, or will they break each other first? Cool. As we so often do here on the High Republic show, we ask you, our dear viewers, to ask the hard questions. The questions that only High Republic experts can answer. Experts who contractually have to answer my calls whenever I make them. A power that I would never exploit. Except for right now! Please welcome Leland Shee from the Lucasfilm Story Group. Hey, Christina. Hey! So, I have a question for you that even I need clarity on. Rob asked, okay, THRS questions. I need some official Star Wars The High Republic info on something. Markeon Rowe. I listened to yeah. the books and I've heard his name pronounced <laughs> two different ways. Yeah. So is it Markeon or Marshion? Han, Han, Leah, Leia, Twi'lek, Twi'lek. Star Wars has a reputation for having multiple pronunciations for names depending on whom you ask. Markeon Rowe has always been Markeon Rowe amongst the Project Luminous authors who discussed the issue extensively before deciding on Markeon. During those conversations, the version with the hard K went out in part because it just felt tougher and had more of an edge, Markeon. much like yeah. Markeon himself. There's plenty of precedent in Star Wars for using the hard K sound for CH, whether you're referring to Christophsis, the Battle of Chiron Belt, the Chimera, or Rogue One composer Michael Giacchino. Personally, 
Well, I would have gone with Marchion, which I think has an authoritative ring to it. All that said, we do leave room for characters in the universe to use varying pronunciations. Okay. There's even been some speculation that the Tempest Runners might mispronounce Marchion intentionally. Who knew Marchion would be the at at or ATAT of the higher public? <laughs> There's the higher public. The mysteries of the written word. And if you have a higher public query you want solved, hit us up online using the hashtag THRS I thought it was Marcion. Robert Stack now I've gone to Marcion. Speaking of mysteries, how about we crack the case of the higher public trust fluency? All right, let's see what we got. While this month may have been short on new novel releases, we're overflowing with brand new character poster art. Kicking okay. things off with galactic pretty boy Zylan Graf. Okay, Zylan Graf. Let's take a look here. Yep, looks about like I expected. We first met this handsome theoretical hyperspace physics expert in Out of the Shadows, and now we finally get to see what his piercing blue eyes and fancy pants threads actually look like. No wonder this man has his own tower. Yeah. Well, well, what do we have here? Why, it's the Celestin pilot of the switchback from Out of the Shadows, Nido Jana Jana. Huh. Huh, there you go. Saved from his indentured contract with the Bind Guild by Chansey Yarrow. This wise old Celestin doesn't know the meaning of the word hurry. I guess that's neato if you're into taking your time. Anyone? No? <laughs> and speaking of Chansey Yarrow, feast your eyes on her character poster. That's a cool, that's a cool dress skirt thing going on here. I'm a fan. I like the outfit in general though, jokes aside. Interesting, yeah. Cool patterning. Before becoming the Nile's hyperspace physicist after her ship was theoretically attacked by Nile raiders, she had a theory that gravity wells could be built and used to forcefully pull ships from hyperspace, which we all know what a great disaster messing with ah. hyperspace can be. But hey, at least she gave birth to her daughter, Sylvestri. And like a well-executed segue, check out Sylvestri Yaro's security droid M227. Oh, he looks cool. This 200-year-old droid may be worthless to some, but it's one of the few things still can call her I own. Like Plus, M227 used to belong to her mother, so it's got that going for it. Oh, and remember Sylvestri's girlfriend, Jordana Sparkburn? Well, check her out in her own character poster. I like the lightning in the horns. Jordana is a Santeca deputy and even has her own hunting cat named Remy. I'd hate to see what that thing does to the furniture. Next up is Jira Staros, the Republic Senator from Corellia we first met in a test of courage as okay. well as in Out of the Shadows. Yep, Who yep, knows okay. where she'll pop up next in the High Republic or with whom? What am I hinting at? Who knows? But <laughs> mark my words, you'll be surprised. You can count on it. I'm getting in the weeds of the marsh here, as others would say. <laughs> Better get back on okay. to what we were talking about. Finally, we've got a new character from the Higher Public Adventures annual for you to feast your eyes on. Alice <laughs> Crash Angle the is a 16-year-old female with pink hair that has her own droid named K-8 that calls her Master Crash. Growing up in the bodyguarding business, she's taken over the Supreme Coronet City Diplomat Protection, Interesting art style running the ops going on and here. business side of things. After the attack on Valo, she's been tasked with keeping Chancellor so safe. Quite a lot on the plate of a 16-year-old kid, but hey, them's the breaks in the Star Wars, kiddos. And for more character posters, bios, and all the High Republic information you could possibly need, check out StarWars.com forward slash oh, I'm cutting off the, the High Republic. This is the High Republic. Well, that's our show. Can't believe the next right. episode will be our first anniversary spectacular. How spectacular? Yeah. Well, you're just going to have to wait and see. In the meantime, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Okay, there we go. As I kind of expected, nothing major this month. Um, some good insight, though, on the whole project, the whole team involved. Uh, January is going to be a big month for the High Republic. Um, next year is going to be big, I think, in general. I'll be curious to see um, how many comic runs continue, how many stories we have to expect, how many waves we'll get in Phase 2, etc., so January is really going to set the tone for the year. I thought last January was extremely successful, January and February. I hope we do the same thing this year as well. Let me know what you guys think down below. Are you guys reading The High Republic yet? How have you liked it? Are you just reading the books, reading the comics? I don't know. Make sure you tell me down below as I know it kind of differs for everyone. Thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll be back again very soon with more content. Make sure you check out our weekly Thursday night streams with Star Wars Timeline and Star Wars Complete. Looking forward to seeing you guys there. Until next time, guys, we'll see you then.